Pope Leo XII, the 22nd of August 1760 to the 10th of February 1829, born Annabelle Francesco Clemente Melchiore Girolamo Nicola Sermite della Genga, pronunciation was head of the Catholic Church and ruler of the Papal States from the 28th of September 1823 to his death in 1829. Leo XII was in ill health from the time of his election to the papacy to his death less than six years later, although he was noted for enduring pain well. He was a deeply conservative ruler, who enforced many controversial laws, including one forbidding Jews to own property. Papal finances were also poor, even though he reduced taxes. As a result, Leo XII's reign was unpopular and provoked widespread discontent within the Papal States. Topic. Biography Topic. Topic. Family Topic. Della Genga was born in 1760, at the Castello della Genga in the territory of Spoleto, to a noble family from La Genga, a small town in what is now the province of Ancona, then part of the Papal States as the sixth of ten children to Flavio della Genga and Maria Luisa Periberti di Fabriano. His brother was Filippo della Genga. He was the uncle of Gabriele della Genga Sermite who in the 19th century was the only nephew of a pope to be elevated to cardinal. Topic. Education and ordination Topic. Della Genga studied theology at the Collegio Campana in Osimo from 1773 to 1778 and later at the Collegio Pacino in Rome until 1783 when he commenced studies at the Pontifical Academy of Ecclesiastical Nobles. He later received the subdiaconate in 1782 and then the diaconate and was ordained to the priesthood on 14 June 1783. He received the latter two from Cardinal Marcantonio Colonna. <laughs> Papal nuncio and episcopate He served as an ambassador to Switzerland. In 1790 the attractive and articulate Della Genga attracted favorable attention by a tactful oration commemorative of the late Emperor Joseph II. In 1794 Pope Pius VI made him a canon of St. Peter's Basilica, and in 1793 created him titular Archbishop of Tyre. He was consecrated in Rome in 1794 after the appointment and was dispatched to Lucerne as the Apostolic Nuncio. In 1794 he was transferred to the nunciature at Cologne, but owing to the war had to make his residence in Augsburg. At this time, he believed it would be his last post and organized the construction of tombs for his mother and for himself. During the dozen or more years he spent in Germany he was entrusted with several honorable and difficult missions, which brought him into contact with the courts of Dresden, Vienna, Munich and Württemberg, as well as with Napoleon I of France. It is charged, however, that during this period his finances were disordered, and his private life was not above suspicion. For example, he was suspected of having had a liaison with the wife of a soldier of the Swiss Guard, and he allegedly fathered three illegitimate children. After the Napoleonic abolition of the States of the Church, 1798, he lived for some years at the Abbey of Monticelli, solacing himself with music and with bird shooting, pastimes which he continued even after his election as Pope. Topic. Cardinal Topic. In 1814 Della Genga was chosen to carry Pope Pius VII's congratulations to Louis XVIII of France upon his restoration. On 8 March 1816 he was created Cardinal Priest of Santa Maria in Trastevere and he received his red zucchetto on the 11th of March and his titular church on 29 April 1816. Later he was appointed as the archpriest of the Basilica di Santa Maria Maggiore, and appointed to the Episcopal See of Senigallia, which he resigned in 1818 due to health reasons. He resigned without ever having entered his archdiocese. On 9 May 1820, Pope Pius VII gave him the distinguished post of Vicar General of His Holiness for the Diocese of Rome. Pontificate Topic. Topic. Papal election Topic. 
Pope Pius VII died in 1823 after yet another long pontificate that spanned over two decades. In the conclave of 1823, Della Genga was the candidate of the Zilanti faction and in spite of the active opposition of France, he was elected as the new pope by the cardinals on 28 September 1823, taking the name of Leo XII. His election had been facilitated because he was thought to be close to death, but he unexpectedly rallied. He had even remarked about his own health to the cardinals, saying that they would be electing a dead man. It was said in the conclave that he lifted his robes to show the cardinals a pair of swollen and ulcerated legs to deter them, but that made them even more eager to elect him. Leo XII was 63 at the time of his election and frequently fell victim to infirmities. He was tall and thin with an ascetic look and a melancholic countenance. He fell ill after his coronation but after his recovery, he showed surprising endurance in carrying out his work. Leo XII devoted himself to his work and was simple in his mode of life. He had a passion for shooting birds and was rumored to have killed a peasant with whom he argued about sporting rights. The cardinal protodeacon Fabrizio Ruffo crowned him as pontiff on the 5th of October 1823. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Foreign policy. Topic: <inaudible> Pius VII's secretary of state, Ercole Consalvi, who had been della Genga. S. rival in the conclave, was immediately dismissed, and pious policies rejected. Leo XII's foreign policy, entrusted at first to the octogenarian Giulio Maria della Somalia and then to the more able Tommaso Bernetti, negotiated certain concordats very advantageous to the papacy. Personally most frugal, Leo XII reduced taxes, made justice less costly, and was able to find money for certain public improvements, yet he left the church's finances more confused than he had found them, and even the elaborate jubilee of 1825 did not really mend financial matters. <laughs> <laughs> Domestic policy <laughs> Leo XII's a domestic policy was one of extreme conservatism. He was determined to change the condition of society, bringing it back to the utmost of his power to the old usages and ordinances, which he deemed to be admirable, and he pursued that object with never flagging zeal. He condemned the Bible societies, and under Jesuit influence reorganized the educational system, placing it entirely under priestly control through his bull quad divina sapientia and requiring that all secondary instruction be carried out in Latin, as he required of all court proceedings, also now entirely in ecclesiastical hands. All charitable institutions in the Papal States were put under direct supervision. Laws such as that forbidding Jews to own property and allowing them only the shortest possible time in which to sell what they owned, and that requiring all Roman residents to listen to Catholic catechism commentary, led many of Rome's Jews to emigrate, to Trieste, Lombardy and Tuscany. The results of his method of governing his states soon showed themselves in insurrections, conspiracies, assassinations and rebellion, especially in Umbria, the marches and Romagna, the violent repression of which, by a system of espionage, secret denunciation, and wholesale application of the gibbet and the galleys, left behind it to those who were to come afterwards a very terrible, rankling and long enduring debt of party hatreds, of political and social demoralization, and, worst of all—a contempt for an enmity to the law, as such." In a regime that saw the division of the population into Carbonari and Sanfedisti, he hunted down the Carbonari and the Freemasons with their liberal sympathizers. Vaccination controversy According to some contemporary authors such as G. S. Godkin, Leo XII was also said to have prohibited vaccination. More recent scholarship has been unable to find any ban or any suggestion of a ban by Leo XII and his administration. Donald J. Keefe in his paper, Tracking the Footnote, traced a quote by Leo XII which strongly condemned vaccination to an unverified citation by Dr. Pierre Simon in Le Contrides Naissances. The response of the papacy to the arrival of vaccination in Italy has been documented in Praeque de la Vaccination Antivarialique dans les provinces de l'état pontifical au 19 e siècle, an article written by Yves-Marie Berset and Jean-Claude Ottony for Revue de Histoire Ecclesiastique. According to Berset and Ottony, the biographers and contemporaries of Leo XII do not mention any interdict. 
The authors credit the origin of the mythical vaccination ban of Leo XII to the personality of Cardinal della Genga when he became pope in 1823. His intransigence and piety alienated liberal opinion very quickly. His austere spirituality made him the target of criticisms and mocking remarks. English travellers visiting the peninsula and many of the diplomats established in Rome remarked on the severity of the pontiff. Activities Leo XII beatified a number of individuals in his pontificate which totaled at 15. He beatified, Angelina di Marciano and Bernardo Scamacca the 8th of March 1825, Hippolytus Galantini the 29th of June 1825, Angelus of Gualdo Tadino the 3rd of August 1825, and Angelus of Acre the 18th of December 1825. He also beatified in 1825, Julian of St. Augustine, Alonso Rodriguez and James Grissinger. He beatified Imelda Lambertini the 20th of December 1826 and also confirmed the cultus of Jordan of Saxony in 1826. He also beatified Helen of Poland and Maddalena Panatieri on the 26th of September 1827 as well as Giovanna Soderini 1827 and Helen Duglioli and Juana de Aza the mother of Saint Dominic in 1828. Leo XII also created Peter Damian a doctor of the church in 1828 in addition to the formal canonization he presided over. He collaborated with Vincent Strambi, future saint, who served as his advisor. When he was on the brink of death in 1825, Strambi offered himself to God for the survival of the Pope. The Pope rallied from his ailment, but Strambi died. The Pope also approved the missionary oblates of Mary Immaculate on 17 February 1826 when he gave it official recognition. He held eight consistories in which he elevated 25 new cardinals into the cardinalate. This included Cardinal Bartolomeo Alberto Capillari, the future Pope Gregory XVI, on 13 March 1826. Leo XII made himself unpopular with the people due to the fact that he constrained them to endless rules that concerned private life and public affairs. He decreed that a dressmaker who sold low or transparent dresses would incur ipso facto excommunication. The Pope also denied the Jews the right to possess material possessions and allowed them the shortest time to sell their belongings. He revived the regulations of the Middle Ages in regards to segregation and marks for identification. <laughs> Death and legacy on 5 February 1829, after a private audience with the new Cardinal Secretary of State, Tommaso Bernetti, he was suddenly taken ill and he seemed to know that his end was near. On 8 February, he asked for and received the Vaticum and was anointed. On 9 February, he lapsed into unconsciousness and on the next morning, he died. He was buried in a monument of him in St. Peter's Basilica on 15 February 1829. His remains were transferred and buried before the altar of Pope Leo I on 5 December 1830. Leo XII is considered to have been a man of noble character, with a passion for order and efficiency, but one who lacked insight into the temporal developments of his time. His rule was unpopular in Rome and in the Papal States, and by various measures of his reign he diminished greatly for his successors their chances of solving the new problems that confronted them. Topic. Rumors of a liaison Topic. It was alleged that Leo XII had a liaison as a prelate with the wife of a Swiss guard known as Pfiffer and later fathered three illegitimate children while acting as the nuncio in the German kingdom. The first allegation was brought to the attention of Pope Pius VI who met with the prelate to discern the truth of the matter. He refuted all claims to the Pope and the matter was dropped then and there save for the fact that Della Genga affirmed he was close to Pfiffer. See also Topic. Cardinals created by Leo XII List of encyclicals of Pope Leo XII List of Popes Topic. References Topic. Topic. External links. Topic. 
This article incorporates text from a publication now in the public domain, Chisholm, Hugh, ed. 1911. Leo Popes, Leo XII. Encyclopædia Britannica, 16, 11th ed. Cambridge University Press. 2. Artaud de Montour, Histoire du Pape Léon XII, 2 vols, 1841 Schmidlin I, pp. 367-474 M. Rossi, Il Conclave di Leone XII. Lo Stato Pontificio e l'Italia all'Indomani del Congresso di Vienna. 1935 EC7, 1156-1158 LTHK2 Volume 6, SP, 952-953 Georg Schwager, Leo XII. In, LTHK 36 827-828. Kelly, Reclam's Lexicon der Papst, 1988, pp. 322-f. Georg Denzler, 1992. Leo XII, Annabelle del la Genga. In Bots, Traugott. Biographisch Bibliographisches Kirchenlexikon BBKL in German. 4. Herzberg, Botz, Calls. 1450-1451. ISBN 3-88309-038-7. Giuseppe Monsagrati, Leone 12. In, Massimo Bray, ed. Encyclopedia dei Papi, Istituto della Encyclopedia Italiana, Vol. 3, Innocenzo 8, Giovanni Paolo 2, Rome, 2000, OCLC 313,581,724 Works by and about Pope Leo XII in the Deutsche Digital Bibliothek German Digital Library Catholic Hierarchy Entry <laughs>